Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Governor of Central Bank, Deputy Governor of Central Bank, Home Sec Ministry of Finance and other officials of the Ministry of Finance and of course Central Bank, our alternate executive director and uh, former Minister of Finance of Nigeria, this is Zainab Ahmed. Um, distinguished Senator Sani Musa, Chairman, Senate Committee, Committee on Finance, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm pleased to be here to just uh, make some remarks about the experience that uh, the Nigerian delegation, which I've had, I've had the honor to lead to the World Bank IMF spring meetings uh, um, to talk about um, our experience, what we've seen here, and the, the general impression of um, uh, that has been um, that I would say that we have made. I think it's important to be able to speak about how we have been received and the reactions to uh, what we have done and to what we presented. Well, let me start with just some thoughts about the global economy because this is uh, has been a week of conversation about the world economy and in brief the reality is that the global economy has not quite recovered from the COVID-19 uh, shock and subsequent shocks which we are all aware of but America has the American economy has got back to pre-COVID levels, it's grown about 8% over the last four years, whereas the other rich countries um, and, the, and some emerging countries have grown by less than that. And I think um, the lesson that uh, we have learned this week is that in attempting to reform an economy and in trying to fight inflation, the, the, the sooner the measures are implemented robustly, the quicker the period um, of transition back to a growing economy. The World Bank itself is in evolution, uh, along with the rest of the multilateral development um, organizations. There has been a voice, not just from Africa, but from other uh, less developed and poorer countries, that they wanted um, um, a fairer, uh, distribution of resources and access to finance for development and that voice has been heard we're talking we hear now about a bigger a better and a more efficient world bank and we look forward to that because it means amongst other things a shortage or a shortening of the period of processing of loans and um, project financing by the world bank um, as the leader of the Angola, Nigeria, and South Africa constituency of the bank, I had the honor of leading uh, that constituency to the um, development committee meetings, the G20 meetings, the G24 meetings, and I chaired the African consultative meetings with the IMF and World Bank managing directors, and uh, several other bilateral engagements. So we've had robust engagements with the U.S. Treasury in particular, uh, Britain, uh, as well as other countries. Um, we are, Nigeria does lead the African continent uh, and it did so in terms of the ratification of a third chair at the IMF for Sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, we took the opportunity to um, showcase the bold and courageous fiscal uh, consolidation measures that uh, Nigeria has undertaken and we explained in very clear terms the sequencing of our reforms, the emphasis on domestic resource mobilization, uh, the, the ramping up of domestic revenues, efficiency in expenditure and of course the fact that the private sector remains the key engine of growth and therefore attention is being paid to ensure that they have a conducive macroeconomic framework. So, in conclusion, we have participated 
in um, the conversations of this week. And um, at the end of the day, we can say that increased domestic resource mobilization, prudent management of finances are the twin focal points um, that, that are shaping uh, fiscal consolidation elsewhere and will also be the case in, in, our own, um, in our own strategy. And as we pursue our, uh, our journey to a just energy transition, managing our di diversification away from fossil fuels, decarbonization, and uh, working towards net zero, an important highlight has been the announcement uh, this week at these meetings that there will be provision of electricity to 300 million more people on the African continent between now and 2030 as a result of the concerted effort of the World Bank in conjunction with other development partners. So, um, all in all, I think it's important to say that uh, uh, the impression has been that the Nigerian team has had a very, very good outing at the World Bank IMF Spring Meetings 2024. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. If I may respectfully stand on existing protocols. Um, thank you for the opportunity to address you today. It has indeed been a fruitful few days of engaging with our esteemed international policy counterparts and stakeholders from around the world, as well as Nigeria's investors. We came here with a very clear agenda and have held highly significant intentional meetings, each one with an objective to further support the stability and ultimate growth of the Nigerian economy. Besides our meetings with multilateral financial institutions and foreign investor groups with a keen interest on developments in Nigeria, including the US Chamber of Commerce, we had very productive discussions with leading international money transfer operators, IMTOs, where we collectively committed to doubling remittance flows through formal channels into Nigeria in the immediate short to medium term. This target is both ambitious and achievable, and we are wasting no time in setting up a collaborative task force reporting to myself to drive progress and address any bottlenecks that hinder flows through formal channels. In the six months since assuming the position of central bank governor, the challenges have been significant from grappling with inflation to addressing volatility in the foreign exchange market. However, with relative stability now achieved, particularly in the foreign exchange market, we have transitioned from firefighting to strategic planning across key areas. These areas include improving the ease of doing business in Nigeria to consolidate and sustain the gains through an efficient and transparent market system and boosting financial and economic inclusion for small businesses and households, interrogating all potential ways to leverage smarter use of technology and remote banking to reduce the cost of transactions and expand accessibility to the financial system. April saw the Naira emerge as the best performing currency globally, supported by bullish sentiments from leading international investment institutions. Our foreign exchange market is experiencing robust activities with turnover reaching levels not seen in over seven years. 
This liquidity boost instills confidence amongst investors, businesses, and other partners, ensuring fluidity in their interactions with Nigerian foreign exchange markets. However, we remain vigilant, recognizing the challenges that persist, such as elevated inflation driven by rising food prices, transportation costs, and energy expenses. We note that inflation, though rising, is doing so at a decelerated rate, and we are confident will soon commence a fall. Security concerns in food producing regions and infrastructure challenges also demand attention. The CBN has implemented a number of policy reforms to address some of these various pressures. And while I'm confident enough today to talk about some of our early success, I'm at the same time extremely mindful of our ongoing challenges. We still have work to do in solving all our problems. However, we do have a determined pathway and a sequenced approach to tackling all challenges ahead, working hand in hand with our key stakeholders, including investors, banks, businesses, and notably our counterparts on the fiscal side. We have recommitted our stance to orthodox monetary policy, and it is heartening to see the efforts being put up have started yielding results, especially in terms of rebuilding trust and confidence in our economy and the leadership. In summary, this week, has been extremely productive, and we are eager to translate our discussions into tangible outcomes as we return home. The first question on what are the outcomes from the discussions with the investors. Now, frankly, you, I think it's important to emphasize that um, the discussions we've had are part of a process of continuous engagement. They are part of a process of continuous engagement. And um, it is so critical that we use any opportunity we can to dialogue with investors and to update them on the um, state of the reforms that have taken place. Um, the response from the foreign portfolio investors has been very positive, and it shows in the numbers. And we expect from what the reactions that we got um, during the course of the past few days, that that positive sentiment will continue to improve. That also has some bearing on the second question, which is um, what seems to be a volatility in, in the exchange rate. Again, to be honest, I think we, we should um, expect that there will be um, increases here and there, ups and downs, and even from what you reported yesterday, from what I gather, um, the Naira has again strengthened, you know, overnight. So I think the most important thing to say here is that we are doing everything possible to ensure that we have a stable exchange rate and an exchange rate that is, you know, that finds it's an adequate price discovery level. That is a process that will continue. Diaspora target, um, our target is to double what we what the present uh, flows are, and this may appear ambitious, but I'm confident that we'll be able to accomplish it. Thank you, Vanguard. On international investors, I think you know, the, the forum this week 
was one of uh, a global stage um, uh, and in, in front of an international audience. And uh, we've had the opportunity, as uh, the governor has said, to speak to groups of uh, uh, international investors, portfolio investors uh, in the main, but also uh, those potential foreign direct investors who, who bring what I can describe as the quality funding, the kind of funding that puts uh, um, builds factories and um, creates jobs uh, directly. And um, the response and the reaction from virtually all of them, I can say without exception, has been one of uh, greater confidence in the economic management of the country and um, greater interest and willingness to invest. But in addition, the, as I said, the, the, the international community that uh, we, we have addressed, not just the private sector investors, well, it is critical. And we are a private sector driven economy, and that is the policy of President Bola Ahmed Chinbu is to encourage private, domestic, and foreign investment to grow the economy, increase, uh, uh, create jobs, and therefore reduce poverty. But also, we've had other partners the multilateral um, uh, development banks, bilateral financiers, grant givers, uh, foundations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. So the whole um, ecosystem of international finance has been here and we've engaged with all of them. And I announced earlier some of the things that we have uh, come away with. We've come away with um, um, funding to um, improve and to provide electricity, to provide energy, to provide, to provide power to 300 million more people on the African continent. And we know that the lion's share or the largest single portion will come to Nigeria. And we all know what provisional electricity does to uh, empower a nation, reduce poverty, uh, in, in improve the economy. We've also, uh, I suppose, we've, we can also say that um, we've come away with a, a bigger say for Africa um, through an additional chair, an additional seat on the board of directors of the IMF. We help to complete that process, and I think that um, is a major success for Africa as a whole. In terms of uh, remittances, it is clearly one of the ways in which we can boost foreign exchange supply and the investment, uh, funding for investment in the country. There are Nigerians abroad, they do very, very well. They have uh, significant funding. There are even Nigerians in Nigeria with funds abroad. That too would be a, count as a remittance. And uh, in order to help the issue of supply of foreign exchange to the Nigerian economy, um, we are, the yeah. government is looking at um, attracting those funds and capturing those funds through a diaspora um, type of instrument, a diaspora bond. We think that would be a very attractive uh, instrument for Nigerians abroad and for foreign holdings of uh, foreign currency and uh, we look to having a, substanti a su substantial and successful issue later in the year. Thank you very much. The, the, the role of, uh, of course, the, the, the fiscal side, government financing, government expenditure and government spending is to support the, um, the growth of the economy, to create, uh, uh, to help create an environment where investment uh, flows and um, therefore productivity increases, uh, growth is achieved, jobs are created and as I said earlier, poverty is reduced. But also there's a supporting role as well. You know, when uh, interest rates are elevated, um, it, is, it, is, it has been based on the fact that the central bank has indicated relatively higher interest rates by indicating where the felt inflation would be. And the, the, the complementary role that uh, 
the fiscal side plays is by issuing the government securities at the higher interest rates that attracts the foreign exchange supply. So there's a very much a collaborative role and also an acceptance of the challenge of um, funding the government at relatively higher rates so that we can, one, help fight inflation, which is the central bank's uh, as indicated as it's uh, one of its major, if not its major um, item on the agenda at the moment. And at the same time, attract inflows of foreign exchange to, to, to um, support a stable exchange rate and eventually to lead to lower interest rates that would allow um, <coughs> financing at lower rates in all sectors of the economy. But in the medium term that, that, that you talked about, the idea of an, and the attempt at stabilizing the economy is so that you can get it growing again. Emphasis on agriculture and agro processing. And that is why um, Mr. President has authorized fertilizer uh, provision, uh, provision of seeds and increased acreage on that production, all in attempt to want to increase food security to include this availability of food, to reduce food prices, but at the same time also to have the agricultural sector act as an engine of growth. Um, similarly, there's a commitment to increase power generation, um, to try and increase in the shortest period of time, in a period of six months, the target is to increase um, the generation of power from current around 4,000 megawatts to 6,000 megawatts because we all know the role of electricity in industrialization in economic development. And likewise, there is also um, a commitment to providing more infrastructure, finding the funds to uh, and encouraging investment in infrastructure, including housing. And the target there is that by the time you can provide low interest mortgages that will ignite the construction sector the construction of houses and then the provision of houses to people who can afford them because they can they have low interest mortgages so these are some of the ways in which having moved towards and having success in stabilizing the economy the emphasis now is on attracting funds to growing the economy and in terms of, I must say, in terms of um, affordable mortgages, there are institutional investors in Nigeria who currently are holding what is essentially long-term money in short-term instruments. And so the conversation that is underway is how to get, um, attract long-term funds into long-term uses, particularly provision of low interest mortgages. And these are the ways in which in the medium term, the Nigerian economy will grow, jobs will be created. And um, that phase, whilst we are still in the difficult phase of, as the Governor of Central, Central Bank said, trying to bring down inflation, and we're trying to, um, to, to, to create a better environment for investment, we have turned to looking at what will grow the economy. So, and that's where the focus is. And there is a plan, a, a plan of economic stabilization, which the government economic team, plus the sub-nationals, the governors, and the private sector are currently working on. But I think it's important to also mention that in this process, um, the emphasis on intervention on behalf of the weakest and the most vulnerable in society is uh, is very much at the forefront of the president's priorities. And so the social investment program, which has been um, um, revamped to ensure there is uh, transparency and integrity, particularly of direct payments through biometric identification and through digital uh, um, transfer of funds that is being ramped up. And similarly for nano industries, 
for, for the repairers, the pure water sellers, the, 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 the dealers and so forth, the, there are grants being given to one million nano enterprises. And that is being done efficiently the, through having a national identification number and a bank account or a mobile wallet. And uh, that process is ongoing. Around 200,000 uh, um, out of a million beneficiaries have already been reached. And in, in the not too distant future, others will be. And why that is important? It's important that whilst reforming the economy, there's emphasis on intervening on behalf of those who are most vulnerable. And uh, to do that, you need a sufficient level of um, skill, capacity, and ability to deliver digitally. And that is uh, what the likes of the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation and other uh, partners have helped the, have helped us with so that the social investment program can deliver in a robust manner. Thank you. Uh, yes, on the first part, I think when I said that there was a line of sight, and if you look at the funds that have been flowing in, that's part of it. If you look at the fact that um, we have qualified for uh, um, the processing um, just this week to the board of directors of the World Bank of a total package of 2.25 billion dollars of what you can call i mean the, I, I, there's there's no such thing as a free lunch but it's the closest you can get to free money it's virtually a grant is for about 40 years 10 years moratorium at about one percent interest so um that also is part of uh, the flow that you, you can count and uh, in addition there's a similar uh, budgetary support low interest funding from the African Development Bank. And clearly, there are also ongoing discussions with foreign direct investors. Some of these things take longer uh, than, than, than you expect, but they are relatively advanced discussions on major foreign direct uh, investment flows into the country, specific transactions with specific uh, uh, companies, institutions, and authorities. Um, the, 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 the second part of your question, I think, was on uh, debt and uh, debt sustainability. Clearly, it is a challenge, and the answer to, to debt is revenue. And the first source of revenue for Nigeria as a, as a nation is oil revenue. It is a God-given um, resource to be maximized in the interest of the Nigerians. And that's the first source. So it, it is the shortest route to increased revenue, increased um, uh, foreign exchange supply. And there has been success. When Mr. President took over, uh, the figures were roughly 1.25 million barrels a day uh, in terms of oil, oil production, <coughs> excuse me, oil sales. Today, it's roughly 1.6 million barrels a day, but the determination is to improve security, improve the investment environment such that very quickly that can still be ramped up further. The OPEC quota is 1.7, there's another 300,000 barrels per day uh, um, capacity in terms of condensate, which effectively is still crude. So, so we, we have the leeway to go up to 2 million barrels per day. And that has to be the target. It is the target of Mr. President. It will, in a short time, produce uh, huge dividends in terms of liquidity, and it would obviously help with debt sustainability. But there's also emphasis on non-oil revenue. We have projected in the budget a 60% increase in, 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 non, in, in revenue as a whole to government. Um, as a percentage of GDP tax is about 10%, we're looking to increase that within a few years to 18%. And overall government revenue is about maybe 12%, and we're looking to ramp that up to about 22%, so virtually double. And um, you might say that, well, how will this be done? First of all, we have a tax reform and fiscal policy committee that is shortly to roll out 
a list of measures that will improve uh, um, efficiency in the tax area and enhance and increase revenue. In addition, on the expenditure side, there's a, there's a relatively expensive set of incentives, uh, duty waivers and exemptions on tax and so forth, that's costing roughly 1% of GDP. As usual, uh, on the, on, with uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, something I've done in the past, something he's well skilled at, is applying digitization technology to the process of government revenues, government, uh, the, the, the monitoring, the evaluation, the collection of government revenues. That has been done within the government sector um, to, to, to very great success. And um, in addition, as you probably heard, I'm sure you heard this week, there's been the implementation committee has started, has been inaugurated for the national civil window. That has tremendous prospects for improving the whole uh, import, export, port administration sector, improving revenue and unleashing an economic benefit which has been estimated at $2.7 billion. So you can see that there is a, 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 is a very cohesive and comprehensive plan um, both to attract uh, um, revenue, including foreign exchange revenue, and at the same time to um, block leakages, uh, um, loopholes through digitization, and generally revamp and increase government's um, revenue generation effort. And uh, whilst it is early days, we can say um, that there is already success in this important area. Thank you.